These are 100% Axia swords. Hello and welcome everyone. Today it's time to finally uh, get this overdue deck profile out of the way, which is going to be the updated post GBD10 uh, Victor deck. I don't know about you guys, but here in Luxembourg it is insanely hot uh, these last few days, so I am sweating just holding this deck, honestly. So let's try and go over it quickly before I sweat to death. So, we're gonna start off with the Grade threes. the first one of which is the brand new Excessive Battler Victor. So, this Victor has two skills. First is a Rush on Vanguard and Rearguard Circle, GB2. When this unit stands due to the effect of your card, all of the units in your front row get plus 2k until the end of turn. It's not once per turn, so this does happen every time he stands, but it does not stack. Second skill is when you stride on top of him, you can choose one of your vanguards and give it the skill that once per turn when this unit attacks a vanguard, you can soul blast one. If you do choose one of your rearguards with the rush ability and stand all of your rearguards in the same column as that unit. So, I play this guy at 4, I do prefer him a lot. Well, not a lot, but I think he is very nice because he stands the whole column, we have a lot more rush units, him included, and that GB2 on rearguard circle is super nice because it can bump up your 9Ks to 11Ks and make uh, you hit for even nicer columns. So we play him at 4 because I like him on the Vanguard Circle and on the Rearguard Circle, but the, you know, the old Victor is still very nice, but I have put him down to 3, although it is easily possible to put him up to 4. So if you're not already familiar with his effects, his first one is a GB2, when he attacks the Vanguard he gets plus 5k, and then you can stand a unit, well, stand a Rearguard, and give it plus 5k in the end of turn as well. But it is plus 5k only in the end of battle. Next, when you start on top of him, you give your Vanguard the skill that when the Vanguard attacks another Vanguard, you can count almost 1, if you do, you choose one of your stand it and give it plus 5k in the end of turn, and this is a once per turn ability. So, the better parts of the old Victor is that it's uh, plus 5k, this one doesn't give the plus 5k, so this one can be better in those situations, but I overall, I don't know, like I've played both 4-4, but then I kind of wanted uh, my grade 2s to be a little bit uh, more, so we'll go, we'll, I'll show you basically the one spot that you can change uh, for another uh, fourth of the old victors, but honestly they're both good. I just play four of this one because I do want him on the rearguard circles as well, so that's pretty much it. Now one of the other cards that is also fairly hard to get in comparison to the rest of the deck is Severed Temper. So this guy is basically an updated Sazanda. So his first skill is a Rush, GB2. When he stands with the effect of your card, if you have a Vanguard with Victor in his card name, he gets plus 5k until end of turn. So same like Sazanda, but it's on GB2 and it's Rush, so that's really good. Second, he has a GB1. When your drive check reveals a grade 3 card, choose one of your opponent's front row rearguards with power equal to or less than this unit's power and retire it. So that part is also really good because, you know, you do only run 7 to 8 uh, grade 3s, but once you get that off it's quite nice because you're always going to retire something because he's going to be at 14k by the time, you know, uh, you're going to start. Because like you're not going to be drive checking before you've already stood him with something else. He's going to be at least 14k by then, if not 19k, and then you can pretty much retire anything that's on the opponent's front row. So this guy's super good, he's a better Sazanda. You're going to have GB2 immediately most of the time, at least that's how it goes with my playstyle, and his uh, GB1 on top of that is very nice. But just to uh, finish things off, I do play one Sazanda, and it's basically just a GB1 when he stands with the effect of your cards. Uh, he gets plus 5 gains on of turns. So I play like a basically five of these types that like get five when they stand, but this one also retires. He's super, super good, but he is a promo from uh, shop tournaments, so he will be a little bit harder to get. So he's from the April promo, so try to get them now before they spike in price. Next, so now we went over the uh, plus 5k grade 2s, and now we're going to go over the uh, restander grade 2s. First one of which we have is Extreme Battler Arboreal. So his skill is a GB1 when you call him, you can count us one, soul plus one if you have a Victor Vanguard. If you do, until end of turn, he gets plus 2k and the once per turn skill when he attacks the Vanguard, you choose up to one of your other rearguard standard, and that unit gets plus 5k until end of turn. So he's the better of these standards, he is an on call one, but usually you're just going to call him out, do a big combo, and then intercept with him, and then call a new one next turn essentially. So he's really really good, I really like him for that. Uh, he's in 11k on his own, which is really important. He uses the soul, which you use a bit more now because of this victor but it's still not the biggest problem you know the counter mask can go away from your puck champ plays as well but it's overall a very good card and i do recommend playing it now i do play three cool hanks and this is that slot that i was talking about so you can take down one of these to play your eighth uh, old victor or you can take out the sazanda to play your eighth victor and you know you can some people take out the sazanda and like these to play uh the hedgehogs so it's up to you but i play the three cool hanks because i've tested that they worked the best so far so, Cool Hank's skill is a GB1. When he attacks the Vanguard, if he's boosted, you can count as 1. If you do choose one of your rearguards, stand it, and that unit gets plus 5k until end of turn, and this is a once per turn ability. 
So, he's basically uh, similar to Arbor Rail, but he does not get the plus 2k, and it's also once per turn, but, so therefore, like, if you boost him with a 5k, it's only gonna be 14k, well, if you boost this with a 5k, it's gonna be 16k, hitting you uh, with a, well, hitting them with a magical number, so that's definitely a better plus, but he's still very good, because usually you boost him with 7k, if not bigger, so it's overall quite nice. Next we have the uh, Stride Helpers Arashids, and they're also Victor Searchers, so if you want to be on this Victor and you have this Victor in hand, then you can, you know, call this out and reveal it and search out a different one. So, yeah, pretty standard. This is a Stride-based deck, and one of the uh, more fun and also better ones. Well, it's not the best, but it is quite strong. And now, the next great one, this is a questionable choice. I still play in Flipping Perfect Guards, but you can easily play um, Break Pass, I believe it's called. No, my bad, you can still play uh, Headstrong Battle, that's the name of the other perfect guard, because the deck now really does not use that much counterblast until the final turn, and it does have other ways to countercharge now, so I prefer to stay with these just because it gives me that other, like this extra safety net that I can unflip everything I have before I go for this uh, big Pokcham play, so... Yeah, I still prefer to play the Unflipping Perfect Guards, but you can really switch it up the way, any way you want. The Unflipping Perfect Guards are not as necessary as they were before. Now, my, in my opinion, the core grade one of the deck is this uh, Extreme Battler Maliaki that we play at four times. So, Maliaki's skill is a continuous on Rearguard Circle, GB1. If you have Vanguard with Victor in its card name, all your other units in the same column as this unit get the Rush skill on Vanguard and Rearguard Circle. When this unit stands at the effect of one of your cards until end of turn, this unit gets the skill that when this unit's attack when this unit attacks the Vanguard, choose up to two of your units and they get plus 4k until end of turn. As we've talked about in the previous deck profiles, this ability does stack. So, you know, when it stands once and your attack is going to give plus 4 plus 4 to something, and then that plus 4 plus 4 becomes times 2, so it gives 4 of them, and then, you know, 8 of them, and then 16 of them, and so on, depending on how many times you stand a thing in front of this guy, and then how many times that thing attacks. You know, without being Denial Griffin, which is kind of a, kind of a bad thing for this deck. So this card is definitely the core grade one of the deck, and you would like to have it behind anything that restands a lot, which is basically most of the deck, really. So he is very important, and he does make some mathematical problems if you're not too good at speed counting. And now the final grade one that we have, which I did switch up from the deck preview, is now Furious Puncher. So Furious Puncher's skill, he has two, one is a Rush GB1. When this unit stands with the effect of your card, choose one of your other units and gets plus 5k until end of turn. Second skill is GB1 Act, retire this unit, choose one of your rear guards and stand it. So that second part isn't too relevant because uh, it's basically kind of designed for a different start, a different uh, deck build. But that first skill is really good because when he stands, you give the 5k to anything else. So you're not giving it to him, you're not giving it to the thing in front of it, just anything else. So it's really good because you can, you know, have this behind... Um, like, it does have to stand himself, but you can have it behind anything, and then you can have a Maliaki behind any, and then you're gonna be kind of dishing out a lot of buffs all across the field, so it's really good for that. So I really like Furious Puncher, I think he's a really, really good grade 1. Uh, at the time when I made the deck preview, he wasn't uh, revealed yet, so that's why I didn't uh, include him. So he's definitely very good, and he's good for that final 2 slot. I don't play Claydol Mechanic because there's enough uh, countercharging as it is, especially with the new G-Guard. And then there are other uh, grade 1 text that you can play, but I just prefer this one for now. Now for the trigger lineup, we have four of the Victor crits, so that is quite self-explanatory. And then I have two of Red Lightnings, and then, yes, we do play a total of six draws, just because of the favorite champ Victor. So this build's focus really is trying to get that uh, favorite champ Victor uh, combo off, and it is, you know, it's very good when it does come off and you have a big hand because then it's really, really powerful. But, I don't know, I did play with like 8 crit, 4 draw, and then I did play with, um, I think even 12 crit at some point, but then I was like, you know, I really like getting favorite champ off, so I put in 6 crit, 6 draw, you can do 8 crit, 4 draw if you want. Some people even play 12 draw, but I think that's way too overkill. And then we have obviously 4 heals for our G guards, and then my starter choice is Kabutron, so that's stayed since the uh, deck preview, if I believe that I had this one. So let's go over his skill first. So he does have 4 runner and rear guard GB1. At the end of the battle that he boosted, you can count plus 1 and put him into the soul. If you do choose up to one of your other rear guards, stand it and it gets plus 2k until end of turn. So the ideal combo is, all, honestly, is like, you do this, you attack, then you slide him in the soul, this stands and it's 16k immediately. So, you know, same with Sazanda. So I really like that. I think he's a great starter. You don't use up counter blast as much anymore. That's why I don't play the previous starter that we used to play, which is when something stands in front, it stands himself. I just think this one right now is really good for that early game, for that first stride um, aggro. 
because then honestly like at times you can win on first try just because of how aggressive this deck can be so i do like the starter there is that new starter uh petit ace i think it's called that people are also playing i think it's fairly okay but i just don't really like it myself so feel free to try it out if you want to but this is the main deck that i have uh built so now we're gonna go into the g zone all right, so now let's go over the G zone and God, it's so hot here that even my camera is about to overheat. So I do need to keep this fairly quick. So we're gonna go over with the first of the strides, which is the brand new favorite champ, Victor. So Pog champ skill is a GB2. At the end of the battle that this unit attacked, you can combo us two and discard a card from your hand. If you do, choose up to the same number of your rearguards as the number of face-up cards in your G-Zone and, and stand them. If you stood three or more cards, choose three cards from your hand and discard them. If you discarded three cards, counter charge one and stand this unit ending its drive minus two until end of turn. Keep in mind that this is not a once per turn ability, so the main uh, thing you want to do with this deck is to just build up a huge hand, go into this guy, and then just, you know, attack, 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 and then, you know, combo us two, discard one, stand three or four or five really, and then you discard another three, counter charge one, restand him, and then you keep on doing that, and he does lose minus two drive every turn. So first you do three drive checks, then you do one drive check, and then from then on you do zero. So that's why you need a really big hand, because you don't get any more drive checks, but you do keep discarding four cards per, you know, per uh, Vanguard attack, because you restand your field, your field is getting buffed up, so this is really just, you go into this and you win. The only reason why I play 2, and you really don't need to play 2, I just play it because of the situation I keep being put in, is that I attack with my rearguards, they get Denial Griffin, they get the Narukami G-Guard, um, Skeleton Cannoneer can sometimes be a problem if I'm not being careful enough and I only called like 4 things and then they kill this, and then it's like I have a booster that can't rest itself and this does have to stand them so if my, I can't rest my booster then I'm in a bit of a problem so it's just because I play too just because honestly I just sometimes m just make stupid mistakes when playing casually and then you know I'm just sitting here like oh shit I can't do a skill anymore so like I'll get one time off and then I can't do the second one I'm like fuck I can't do this again so you really only need one because the turn that you go into him you're aiming to win but he is a very, very good G-Guard, but you do need to have three, I mean, not G-Guard, G-Units, but you do need to have three face-up G-Units for him to put in uh, his work. So, the next ride we play is Meteor Kaiser Victor at four. So, Meteor Kaiser Victor's skill is once per turn, flip a uh, Meteor Kaiser Victor face up. At the end of turn, this unit gets the two skills. First, when he attacks, when his attack hits a vanguard, you choose up to one of your rearguards standing as plus off until end of turn. And the GB3 skill, when this unit attacks a vanguard, you choose up to one of your rearguards stand it and it gets plus off until end of turn. So, this is my first stride target. And yes, you won't have the GB3 on first stride, obviously, unless you G guarded the turn before. But even then, you have some nice hit pressure and your rears are still putting in the work. But the most important thing is that you will have two face up uh, G units already. So then, next turn, you G guard, you have your third one face up. and then then you can already go into uh, Pock Champ the turn after. So it's definitely very nice, and I like him a lot for that. I know some people will say Bustard is still important, but I really don't like him in Victor anymore. He's okay in Blouse though. In Blouse, he's actually quite playable, but I would not play him in Victor anymore. So after that, we do have our four Meteor Kaiser Victo Plasmas because we do need an answer to the Link Joker, Kagero, Narukami, etc. matchup, but especially Link Joker. So his skills and act, Kambas 2 and Persona Flip. If the number of face-up cards in your G-Zone is 2 or more until end of turn, he loses one drive check and gets the skill that at the end of the battle that he attacked the Vanguard, you can discard two cards from your hand. If you do, you stand him and you cannot use this ability for the rest of that turn. So he is your answer to the Link Choker matchup because your whole field is getting, you know, locked and you just can't use anything so you might as well swing two times with a vanguard and especially nice with chaos because then they use up cards to you know they discard a card for chaos of skill to um lock one of your units and they're calling out a lot so they don't have that much cards in hand after that first turn of doing chaos stuff so then if you go into this immediately they're not gonna have that much hand to put up with this uh stride so it's definitely very nice to have it for that and then the final stride we have is sabri's I'm pretty sure you all know what he does by now. When your opponent's stuck at uh, grade 2 and they haven't ridden for a turn, you can come as 2 and stride him by discarding any card. And uh, yeah, it's Cray Elemental. So I'm pretty sure most of you already know what he is though. Alright, now for our G-Guards. First, we have one Blue Prison. Blue Prison skill is very simple. When you guard with him, if the number of cards in your damage zone is more than or equal to the number of cards in your opponent's damage zone, he gets plus 5k shield until the end of that battle. So, 20k shield if you have more or the same amount of damage as your opponent. Which, 
off you honestly will considering what the meta is so uh next up we have two meteo kaiser juniors so this is the new g guard so he has two skills when you guard with him if you don't have any face-up cards in your damage zone you cannot judge two and he gets plus five shield until the end of the battle and then the second skill is when you guard with him if you have no cards in your soul you soul charge two and he gets plus five k shield until the end of that battle so there is a new G-Guard coming up in uh, Fighter's Collection, which also does counter charge. So that's going to be also quite nice. I might probably take out one of these for that one. But this one's also nice because you do use up a lot of soul now. So it's good for that soul charge skill. And you do, obviously, you know, especially in early game, you can use up quite a bit of counter blast. So I try to aim so that I use up enough counter blast so you can use him like one time. And then I'll have like no counter blast until I go into the uh, favorite champ. Mr. Pock champ, so there's that. Next we have the one Dismal because we need to pr uh, protect our Sever Temper, Sazandas, and so on. So there's a lot of good targets to protect with Dismal. And then finally we have an Aglium. Uh, we play six draws, so I mean, this uh, G Guard skill is when you guard with it, you can discard a card and draw a card. So you want to be discarding those draws, so it's kind of some easy filtering. So I felt like it was pretty obvious to play it in this G zone. So this is it for this Victor deck, and I'm quite afraid for my camera to uh, overheat from all this heat in the room, so I will be cutting things uh, pretty much now. So I hope you guys did enjoy it, and I know that this was quite delayed. I'm, I apologize, there's just been a lot of things surrounding both university and kind of like uh, my channel itself really and just some things that just kept me from making this I guess so I hope you guys did enjoy it and I hope that you give it a try as well let me know if there's any changes you would make or other ways you play this deck because as I said this build does focus on the favorite champ but there are plenty of ways to play the deck as well so I hope you guys did enjoy this and that's gonna be pretty much it for me so I'll see you guys next time bye bye